Welcome to another Fresh Service Tips and Tricks. My name is Kyle Hamilton. I'm a sales engineer with Flycast Partners. And the title of today's video is how to update tickets using email commands. A frequent request that we receive from customers deals with the need to support remote agents or users either working in the field that are seldom in the office, or it could be for other reasons. It could be because of slow connection speed um, or no access to a desktop or a browser that they can easily work from. So in those cases, Fresh Service provides what they call email commands to help users be able to work remotely in the field without having to log in directly to Fresh Service, but still be able to make updates to tickets that they need to be able to make as far as closing tickets, reassigning tickets, adding notes and activity, but being able to do so from within their email client. So we'll talk a little bit about how you set that up in Fresh Service. And for that, we'll go to the admin console. And within here, you'll find a section. You simply start typing command. You'll see that email commands is located under automation and productivity. There's relatively little to no setup that's required. As a matter of fact, if you want to go ahead and use the default configuration, there is literally nothing to set up. This is ready to go out of the box. Um, the one real configuration setting that needs to be made within this page is at the very top of the screen where you see the email commands delimiter. This is the delimiter that's used within the body of the email to identify the part of the email that contains the commands versus the part of the email that contains text that you simply want added to the ticket because it's important to note that the commands that go in between the delimiter that you define will be stripped out of the email that you send and it will not be visible within the ticket. Any other text that you put into the body of the ticket, such as your issue is resolved, thanks and the agent name, that will be visible directly within the note of the ticket. So you'll be able to see that content but anything that goes in between those delimiters is going to be stripped out by the system. It's going to take whatever actions you've identified within those commands, but that information will not become part of that audit trail or history for that ticket. So in this case, they're using the delimiter of Simon Says. Um, you can use any three character or more delimiter that you choose to use, just knowing that that delimiter that's chosen needs to go at the beginning and at the end of that series of commands that you're going to issue. So if you're changing the status, if you're reassigning that ticket, all of that information needs to go in between that delimiter that you define. Simon Says is a good, a good example uh, because everybody is familiar with the concept. And if Simon says it, you do it. If Simon doesn't say it, you don't do it. And that's the way this email command system is going to work um, out of the box. If Simon says, in other words, if it's in between those delimiters, it's going to take action. If you fail to put those delimiters around your commands, it will not take any action. So using this as the format, we'll show you what that looks like if a user wants to make an update you know, remotely from their email client and what that would look like within the ticket itself. So we're gonna deal with this incident 701 here. And I want to be able, you'll notice in this case, the tickets for Michael Scott. I am the technician that's currently assigned to the ticket, agent working on the ticket. So from my email client and the email that I receive, an important note is this is always gonna be done. These email commands are going to be done from replies from notifications that you receive. So that if I receive a notification that this ticket has been assigned to me from my email client, I can simply respond. And in that response, put my commands delimited by that Simon says in this case, and I wanna close the ticket in this case. Now I can add other commands if I wanna change other fields or update other values at the same time. But if you're looking to just update a single value, you can put that single command in between those delimiters and simply hit send to send that 
reply back to fresh service now within fresh service it's going to again take those commands strip them out of the email and you'll see we just got an update notification on that incident now in this case if we look here at ticket i'll see that that ticket's closed you'll notice in the body of the ticket it simply says your issue is resolved i don't see anything that appears within those delimiters that i define when you're just taking the action and going ahead and closed that ticket you know as i asked now it's important to note as well that email commands will only function if that person has an agent license meaning that I'm able to send that command to Fresh Service and close this ticket because I have an agent license assigned to me in Fresh Service. Michael Scott, as an example, being the requester in this ticket, if Michael had taken the exact same action, if he sends the exact same response I do, um, Michael will be unable to close the ticket um, because Michael does not have an agent license. He simply um, exist in fresh service as a requester and the requesters cannot leverage the same email commands that the agents have. Um, so when you're going through and configuring that, if you're not seeing that expected behavior, that's one important note is you might want to make sure and check to see that that person that's trying to execute that email command does have a fresh service license. So this is a great way for you to be able to provide a means by which your remote users, those people that are working in the field that are seldom, you know, uh, able to sit down and log into a browser or they have some type of bandwidth uh, limitations in which email is going to be a much more efficient way to close tickets and update tickets that they need to. You can easily go through and leverage the email commands to enable that. No setup required if you want to use those delimiters out of the box. But remember, one of those tips is you want to make sure that whatever delimiters you choose for your email commands, that that information is conveyed to your users so that when they're responding, those delimiters go into the body of the email so that those commands take effect and you don't end up with unintended effects or tickets remaining open or not updated because those delimiters weren't added. Thank you for watching another Fresh Service Tips and Tricks presented by Flycast Partners. If you like our videos and this content, please like and subscribe to always be updated on the latest tips and tricks. And if you need more Fresh Service help or resources, reach out to Flycast Partners Professional Services at info at flycastpartners.com.